house and they won't receive the kingdom, don't leave peace there. Let them stay in turmoil until they become kingdom people. But he says, if they will receive the message of the kingdom, and he's talking out of Judah to, to him, them going to the lost sheep of Israel, going to the Jews. He says, listen, if they'll receive this peace, this gospel of peace, this king of kings and lord of lords, then you pronounce peace upon them. Now watch this. Verse 14 says, um, and, and, and whosoever shall not receive you, he says, listen, I want you to shake the dust off of your feet. Shake the dust off your feet. He says, take no remnant of that place with you. He says, shake it off of your feet. And he says, I want you to keep it moving. He says, and this is what you got to understand. It's going to be hard on them in the last days. It's going to be hard on them in the last days. And he says, listen, I want you to understand, listen, you're going forth on my mission and I'm sending you forth. I'm giving you power to do certain things. And I want you to go forth with my mission. Now watch what he says here in verse 16. He says, behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore, watch this, wise as serpents, but harmless as doves. He says, I want you wise as a serpent. But I also want you as harmless of a, as a dove. Now, uh, he says to the believer, to the disciples who are going forth on this apostolic journey, I need you to have this attribute from a snake. A-N, tet, revelation, and, 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 and the snake himself, the subtlety of the snake. Now, watch this. In, in, in biblical context, the serpent represents several things. Um, it not only represents evil, a lot of times we only think that the serpent represents evil, but it represents much more than that. And we're going to talk about that in this broadcast and maybe a couple more down the road. We're going to talk about what he really represents. But one of the things that he represents, watch this, is not only evil, but he also represents wisdom. Notice the context. He says, I want you to be as wise. I want you to be as wise as Big Mama's wise sayings. No. I want you to be as wise as your pastor. No, that's not what he says. He says, I want you to be as wise, as intelligent, as, in, as prudent, as mindful as a snake would be. I want you to be as wise as a serpent and yet be as harmless as a dove. So he gives us this positive attribute of, of, of an animal a, a, a creature that most of us have disdain for. Most of us don't like snakes. We don't like serpents. They've always, we, we've always been taught, kill the snake, kill the snake. But, but Jesus says in context, there's something that this serpent has that I want you to get from him. And I want you to get his wisdom. And so we have to understand, watch this, that in this prophetic season, in this next year of 5779, that God is going to open your eyes, watch this, to the revelation of the snake. He's going to help you see in, the next, in this next year, watch this, all of the enemy's plans, because that's one aspect of the serpent. He'll help you to see evil. He's not going to let you get caught up in diabolical plans. He's not going to let you be taken care of, but he's going to give you a wisdom. Here's the positive attribute, the good and the evil of this serpent. He says, I'm going to give you prudence. I'm going to give you intelligence and I'm going to give you wisdom to see the enemy's plans and to have a strategic plan on how we're going to conquer him. Hallelujah. A-N Tet, I'm opening your eyes, your spiritual understanding, so that you can see the enemy's plans in your life. As a result, as a result, you have to consider your heart. Notice he said in Matthew, uh, Matthew, Matthew, I'm sorry, Matthew 10, he says, I want you to be as wise as a serpent, but I want you to be as harmless as a dove. This word harmless here, watch this, means that you're pure. You don't have evil in you. You're free from guile. So watch this. Here's going to be the challenge for the believer in this next season. You're going to have to be, you're going to have to be able to discern and see evil. 
That evil may show up in your children. That evil may show up in your church. That evil may show up in a friend that's seeking to betray you. That evil may show up in diabolical plans on your job, in the workplace. That evil may show up in your best friend that you thought was your best friend, who had another best friend, who's telling you all the things you tell your best friend, and you find out you're not their best friend, so everything you're trusting with your best friend becomes their best friend's information. Oh, yes. It may be that you have to go through deception and betrayal this year. But what's going to be so important to us in the kingdom is how do we respond? How do you respond to accusation? How do you respond to political unrest? How do you respond to, to, to ethnic issues? How do you respond as the kingdom? Can you respond in wisdom? I'm sorry, with wisdom as a strategy. Watch this. But harmlessness as the status of your heart. Can you see evil being perpetrated on you? Can you see people coming at you and watch this? Look to the kingdom principle on how you're going to respond. Can you pray for those who are going to despitefully misuse you? Help me, Holy Ghost. I feel your presence. Can you pray for those? Can you do good? Can you return good? For evil, knowing this, that watch this, that God is going to watch this, control the evil, even as he controls the good. Can you be as wise as the serpent, but as harmless as the dove? So in this season of A.N. Tet, in this year, he's going to open up Revelation. He's going to let you see the enemy, but he's going to give you strategy to move in wisdom on how to handle the enemy's attack. See, one of the other things about this year, as, 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 as Matthew 13 records, that the year, this year, this, really this decade, you should have been waking up spiritually to hear more and to see more spiritually. Now, now, now let me say this to you, as I said to, to Impact a few Sundays ago, your first battleground is going to be self. <laughs> yes, God may show you some things about you, that you need to correct in your life. He may sow you strongholds and footholds in your life that you've got to take captive by the obedience of Christ and bring every thought, every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. You got to get your mind right. Now, one thing that's, that, 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 that's worse than anything, <laughs> watch this, that, that when, you, when, you're, when you're in the military, there's only a few, a few things that can bring you off of the battlefield. There are certain injuries that, that bring you off of the battlefield because there are some injuries, watch this, that you, learn how, that you learn how to fight with and fight through. There are other injuries that will limit your ability as a soldier to fight a good fight. The first thing, watch this, is the loss of vision. When you lose your vision, you can't even see the enemy. So you can't fight. So you've got to have, watch this, you've got to be able to see the enemy to deal with what you have to come against. And if you can't see him, then you can't fight him. Let's move this over to the spiritual side. If you can't see the enemy's tactics, a in tet, revealing of the snake in the grass, this is the year of revealing the snake in the grass. If, if we can't see what the enemy's doing, then we don't know how to war against it. If you can't see that enemy acting up in your children, you don't know how to pray. If you can't see that enemy taking hold through depression on your husband or your wife, you don't know how to pray. What do you see? The next thing that'll pull a soldier off the war, off the battlefield is if he loses, watch this, an important limb. So if he loses a leg or an arm, then he has to come off the battlefield because he's now incapacitated. He can't wage war skillfully on one leg. Amen. He can fight to the death if he's injured, but he cannot re-enter to fight another day. Hallelujah. And finally, watch this. If he loses his mental capacity, if he loses his mind, he cannot be on the battlefield. He cannot fight. So in this season, watch this. The Bible says here in Matthew in Matthew 13 that the issue with the people was they had lost their seeing. They had lost their hearing and they had lost their heart. Their heart had grown dull. And in this season, God wants to wake you up. Revive you, renew you for a n tech. You're going to have to fight a fight like you've never fought before. But what the Father wants to do is ensure that you are properly equipped for the battle, O soldier. So in this year 5779, the year of a n tech, 
He's going to open up your vision. He's going to help you see what you've never seen before. You're going to see revelation and strategies come forth. Because one of the major things you're going to have to deal with this year is your, your time as an intercessor and in prayer. And we'll talk about that in another session. But what we want to understand, a and Tet is bringing us the year of the eye and the serpent. The eye and the serpent. So which side of the serpent are you going to fall on in this year? Are you going to be that person that is a perpetrator of evil? Or are you going to be that person who has the wisdom and the prudence and the heart for God to trust you with kingdom revelation? Listen, again, this is Keith Moore. God bless you. Let me, let me pray for you just for a moment before we leave. Father, we pray now that you would bring understanding to your people. That, Lord God, in this year, you're going to send us forth with the wisdom of the serpent, but the harmlessness of the dove. We thank you for that key to discipleship. We thank you, Lord God, that you're sending in, watch, oh God, you're sending in new souls new people to be a part of what you're doing in this kingdom season. We thank you now for your revelation as it goes forth in your people. We ask you to open up the eyes of their discernment. Help them to mature and understand and see the kingdom by reason of exercise. Even as you said of your children in the book of Hebrews, that they learn, they mature, and they gain discernment by reason of exercise. So, Father, help us to see the enemy. And then, Father, give us the strategies to deal with everything that comes against us. Help us to have financial strategies and family strategies and marriage strategy and kingdom strategy on how we're going to advance the kingdom in the earth. Let each mountain of our lives represent you well through our families, through our finances, through, through our jobs, occupationally, whatever, wherever we stand, Father God, we need your strategy. So release God, a intent unto us in this prophetic season, that we may see the enemy, the snake in the grass, and have revelation on how to handle it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Listen again, this is Keith Moore of Impact Christian Church, a Kingdom Agenda Fellowship. We thank you for joining us for this session of the Kingdom Agenda. And we welcome you to join us on our next session when we'll be sharing more about this year of AN Tech. We say unto you, God bless you. Shalom, shalom. And be in peace. You're tuned in to Life Television Network. Bringing you nothing but the best in anointed teaching, preaching, and gospel music. KC promote your business or event. We have designed and printed thousands of flyers for businesses throughout the Gulf Coast. Postcards, business cards, club flyers, posters, event tickets, invitations, and much more. Already have your design? For a limited time, get 1,000 4x6 postcards printed for only $75. Same day printing on most orders. That's KC Downtown Pritchard. Visit us at kcphotographyandprinting.com or call 251-452-5200. Friends, if you have questions, we have answers. And our Faith Talk Tuesday Bible study with Dr. Dexter Easley. You have what you want. But I choose to speak what I desire. 
So when I speak it, so I declare in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I thank you for the automobile. I thank you, Lord God, that I'm able to receive it. And Father God, I'm speaking according to your word. That if I call those things, it's not as though I desire them to be. I must act like it's so. So Father, I'm going to get into this car that I have now. And I'm going to act like I already have what I want. I got pictures of what I want. I got things that I can see. So now my mind, my whole body is focused on what. Now, I don't care what nobody else says. They come in the house and say, why you got that thing sitting up there? Got what you want? You can't afford that. Father, in the name of Jesus. Faith Talk worship services begin at 7 o'clock p.m. So come and have those questions answered at Faith Talk Tuesday evenings right here at New Life Christian Fellowship Church. And we look forward to seeing you here. Well, praise the Lord. Welcome to the broadcast. I'm Pastor Dexter Easley of New Life Christian Fellowship Church. And today you got to get yourself ready. Get your pad, get your pencil out, get your Bible out as you learn about a powerful teaching. Let's go into the message already in progress. And I'll be right back. The objective of the lesson is to show you the value of Christian influence when it comes to your family, connecting to God's purpose and God's plan. For every family on the earth, God has a purpose and God has a plan for. And you are a part of that plan. Now, I'm talking to several different people here this morning. I'm talking to those that are born again, that are saved, that love the Lord Jesus Christ. And then there are those that are, that are really uh, walking with God and, and, and committed to God, but you just hadn't said, Lord, come into my heart, and you haven't received Jesus as Lord of your life. Then I'm talking to those that don't even care to say, hey, man, I'm just, I'm just here. Somebody made me come, you know. So I'm talking to different people. And but what I want to show you today is I want to talk about you being the salt of the earth. As you go over to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 13, are you there, class? Ready? Now read. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a, bas a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all men who are in the house. Somebody say in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and do what? Glorify your Father in heaven. The first thing that we must understand that God has already placed in you the light of his glory when you're born again. When you become born again and Jesus become Lord of your life, you have the light of God on the inside of you. Amen. Now, I love that. And you are the salt of the earth. Amen. Now, go over to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. We are still establishing, first of all, that you already, if you're born again, you are the light. Amen. Look at Ephesians chapter 5 in verse 8. If you're there, say, I'm there. I'm there. Ready? Now read. I was two people. <laughs> Ready? Now read. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. What? righteousness and in truth amen finding out what is acceptable what with the lord or to the lord amen so now what we're finding out that it is important that we are the light of the world amen now today's lesson is talking about influencing your family say that with me influencing my family now let's go and start off with this you're not going to find the word influence in the bible i don't care how you look you can go to you can google it you're not going to see it it's not going to have influence in the Bible. But what you are going to see, and this is what I believe, I believe that word salt is actually talking about influence. It's actually talking about allowing your salt to end your life to influence others. You know, um, late Lisa and I went to this restaurant just a few days. I mean, I guess we was in Augusta just a few days ago, and we was in Augusta, and, and we was eating nice food, really healthy food. You know, she liked to keep me with a healthy kick, you know. She's going to take this out. Of but anyway, praise the Lord. Amen. And so she takes me, she takes me to this restaurant. We stopped there and she got her food. I got mine. And uh, man, mine was delicious. I mean, it was seasoned right. And she said, you know what? My food tastes a little bland. You know, and it needs something. And so she reached over and she grabbed the salt. And so she added some salt to it. And then it was able to make her food flavor change. It was great. Still one like mine. Mine was delicious. <laughs> I had to add no salt. 
Amen. And, uh, <laughs> and as she added the salt to it, you can tell that she began to enjoy the meal even the more. She liked it at first, but she began to enjoy it even the more. Just think of this for a moment, that your family life and those that you know life is just planned. They have no pizzazz to it. They have no taste to it. But here you are, you the salt. But instead of you being poured out on that relationship, you're staying in the salt shaker. And God wants us to be poured out and flavored among others' lives in order to give them hope. See, Jesus Christ came to save. But he came to give life, and a lot of times we don't talk about that. He did come to save us. But why save someone and not give them a better way? That's why this lesson is called, There is a Better Way. Because Jesus came in order to give us a better way. How do I know he came to give us a better way? Let's look at this scripture. Put it up on the screen, John 10 and 10. Let's look and see the dynamics of what God says. John 10 and 10. The thief does not come except to do what? To steal, kill, and destroy. Who is the thief? Well, look at y'all. That's Satan, the devil. Y'all know where we're going. Well, who's trying to give us life? Jesus. It says, I have come that they may have life, and they may have it what? More. That word life means zoe. It is the God kind of life. It's living at the ultimate end of the perspective. It's being able to be blessed on top of being blessed. It's talking about enjoying your life, enjoying your family. Glory to God. Not just tolerating your marriage, but loving your marriage. Praise God. Not just tolerating your children, but loving your children. Amen. Not just say, on the work I go because I owe, I owe, I owe. <laughs> it's enjoying life. Man, I run into so many miserable Christians. And I asked them, I said, did you get saved? And they laughed. <laughs> I said, no. I said, because Jesus came not to only save us and rescue us out of the pit of hell, but he also came that we should live an abundant life. An abundant life, child of God, is more than more houses, cars, and lands. Amen. All those things are great. Praise God. And hey, and we want more. Hallelujah. Amen. You know that's right. Praise God. But it's more than just that. It's peace. It's love. It's joy. It's the Holy Ghost, glory to God, amen. It's all those things, being able to go home and not, you know, not be all angry and mad and frustrated. Look at y'all looking at me and saying, yeah, if I said, reach on, brother. Amen. I'm telling you, boy, you'll stop a lot of hospital visits if you just get a little bit more happier. Come on. Amen. Amen. Just get happy, praise God. You know, well, and believers, we should be there. And the reason why that is primarily because of this, this simple thing, is that we've quit being salty. And we begin to act salty. This is what I told my, my young, well, my young, she's not young. Uh, how old is he, about you? 35? 35, 36, my, 37? Hey, no, no, don't say too many. Okay, now, then, then I'm getting into trouble. Then I'm getting old. So, my older daughter, amen. <laughs> I told her, I said, she says, yeah, you know, we was good. And I says, you know what, your problem is, is that you, you take around a tree everywhere you go. She said, a tree? What are you talking about, Dad? I said, you know, you just take, everywhere you go, you got to take a tree around. She said, what are you talking about? I said, because everywhere you go, you get a little shade. You put a little shade on people. <laughs> I said, quit, quit, quit putting shade on me. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and some Christians, that's what they do. <laughs> Instead of them taking a the salt shaker, they take a tree. Throw a little shade on people. Criticize folks put people down a little bit. That's a little push. You ain't like us. You, you, not, you don't pray 25, 24 hours a day. I should have said 25 because some of them got 25. You don't do what we do. So put a little shade on them instead of being a little salty. Because truly, our families need to know Christ. Can I get an amen to that? They need to know Christ. But let's go to Acts chapter 16. Oh, no, no, Ephesians chapter 5. I didn't go there. I, yeah, I did finish. Go to Acts chapter 16. Amen. Now, in Acts chapter 16, as you're turning there, I'm going to tell you this story, and I'm trying to get to this point real quick. But, I, I, but this, this is so important because this is the, I, I would say this is the, the subject or the scripture that we're building the foundation of influence on. 
this scripture here. In Acts chapter 16, here Paul and Silas are in, is in jail. They have been locked up, and now they're in jail. And the Bible talks about, many of us heard this sermon, a message before, when they prayed at midnight. How many heard that? And the, and the, and the jail started shaking. And, and, all that. and a lot of times we stay on that part. That's a great part. But I always ask the correct question. Even when I was in college, Bible college, I asked the question. I say, Professor, why did God cause the jails to shake? If it wasn't for, I know if I was in jail and the earthquake happened and the doors was open. Hello, somebody. Hello, hello. It's time to go. It ain't, it, you, know, you know what I'm saying? If I was in jail, and I know, but I mean, I would, it's time to go. The Lord made a way out of nowhere, bridge over troubled water. Amen. Kiss me if you can. I'm not on the Bible. <laughs> But that's, that's what I would, that would be the natural thing to do. But Paul did not do that. And what I was asking first, well, why did God cause an earthquake to happen? And then nobody leaves the jail. Nobody gets out. And Paul tells this thing, tells the, tells, tells the chief jailer that all of them are there. That no one, he said, don't kill yourself. Because during those days, if you was a correctional officer in a jail, and your inmate got away, you don't say, oop, my bad. You got to kill yourself. They got to take out a sword, and they kill themselves because they have really not did their job. I'm so glad I'm not back there. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I'm so glad I'm not a correction officer, praise God. <laughs> Amen. At that time, so he would have to kill himself. And Paul here, in this next part, began to tell us the story on why the earthquake was there in my account. I truly believe that God allowed or caused that earthquake to take place in order to reach a family. Wow. Would God do that for you? In other words, he has. Before each and every one of you got saved, there was a miracle associated with your salvation. Yes, 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 yes. Some of us had it differently. Some of us had it that if it hadn't been for God, where would I be? I was at the door of death and God rescued me out of that situation. Or that you've had an experience that have happened in your life that you contribute to you waking up and realize some people call it a light bulb came on. Now let's watch this. In Acts chapter 16 and verse 28. Are you there class? It says, but Paul called with a loud voice saying, do yourself no harm. For we are all here. Look at verse 29. And then he called for a light and ran in. This is the chief jailer. And fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sir, what must I do to be saved? He connected what was going on with the earthquake and everything else with what must I do to be saved? Now, can I ask you a question? How many in here would love to be able to go to a family reunion and a couple of your uncles and cousins comes up to you and says, what do I must do to be saved? Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah. I mean, how about going on your job? All of a sudden, you're just walking on your job, and that supervisor has been giving you a hard time. Reach out and shake hands and say, what must I do to be saved? Yeah. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Some of y'all saying, yeah, Pastor, but uh, I see that. I don't want my supervisor saved. <laughs> I saw that. I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> but suppose that happened. Now watch what goes on here. He says, so they said, believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Watch this. You and your household. He didn't ask for his household. He said, what must I do to be saved? But Paul instructed him that you, you're not the only one that's going to get exposed to this. And watch this. You're not the only one that's going to be influenced. Your whole household going to be influenced. Amen. Amen. Let's keep going a little bit further. Watch this now. Look at verse 32. And then they spoke the what? The word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. If you're going to be a true influencer and you're going to influence your family and those around your life, you must do it by word and not performance. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I'm, I, 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 my family told me this and uh, it, it, they didn't, they said, you know, they didn't want me perfect. They just want me to be real. 
Your family not looking for you to be perfect. They're not looking for you to walk on water. They're not looking for you to do everything right. They're just looking at you to be real. See, when you mess up and they see you confess up, well, let me do it this way. When you mess up and you get up and you confess up, got it? Then they are able to receive you, but when you don't ever confess, you don't ever ask for forgiveness. They always see you just, and then all of a sudden, they begin to look at you as a hypocrite. Why? Because you claim you're perfect. It is amazing why husbands are not saving some. I'll tell you what, and, I, and I'm already saved, and, and if I was your husband, I probably wouldn't get saved in that household either. That's kind of quiet, and people quiet on that. What did he just say? Yeah, because, I mean, the way it is. How? I mean, I, it's and not just husbands, but wives too. It, 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 it is a burden on them. Because they look at you live this life of phoniness to where you pretend on Sunday. And on Monday, you're, 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 you're a hellcat. I mean, can I use that? Is that okay? Is that okay? Is that, is that okay? Uh, is that okay? Let me see. Uh, I'm getting any signals. Let me see if I'm getting any signals, huh? No, 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 I'm talking about man and woman. I'm not just talking about women now. I'm talking about men. Please don't just take it just I'm talking about like No, and you wonder why uh, 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 Billy Bob don't want to get, get saved. You don't wonder why uh, 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 Mashika don't want to get, uh, no, Shika, not sure. Mashika, I, really, I think we even have some Shika. Let me get a name right now because I don't want to mess nobody's name up. Whatever your name is, praise God, amen. But maybe the reason why they're not getting saved is probably because of the influence that you have placed on them. It's been so negative. Now, I'm not telling you to be perfect. I didn't say that at all. I'm just saying be real. Be real. Be real that being a Christian, sometimes things happen in our life. It happens. But we don't sit there and deny it in front of them. That's how we begin to minister to our children. We let them know that, hey, we make mistakes. But you know what? We don't stay down. We get up. We let them know that Christians aren't perfect. We are just forgiven. We are forgiven. God forgives us. John 1 and 9. If we are faithful to confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of all unrighteousness and wash us clean. So what they want to see is you being real. They, they want to see you being real. I remember one time, my brother, <laughs> I was trying to tell him, that I had a righteous anger. You know, I was mad about something. So I said, told my brother, oh, man. You know, he said, what was that? I said, that was a righteous anger. He said, no, that's the same way I get every Friday when I look at my check. That's the same. So that's the same way I get when I, on Friday when I look at my check. I get that mad right there. I said, See, sometimes we put labels on things. Instead of just being real, I was upset, but it doesn't mean I was right. The Bible didn't say don't get angry. It says anger and sin not. You can get angry, but you can repent too. But when you say that, you know how powerful that is? You know how anointed that is to your, to your family members and those on your job? They see that, hey, wait a minute. They got to lean and trust God. Amen. Now let's go on and do this. Number one, influencing your family to serve God is a part of God's plan to impact the world. I'll say it again. It's right up on the screen. Influencing your family to serve God is a part of God's plan to impact the world. Go over to De Deuteronomy chapter 11. Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 19. It says, you shall teach them to your children. Speak of them with you sit in your house. And when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. And you shall write them on the doorposts of the house and uh, uh, on the gates that your days and days of your children may be multiplied in the land which the Lord sworn to your fathers to give them. Like the days of heaven above the earth. Praise God. Isn't that awesome? So it is God's plan to touch our family. It is the will of God. That is the plan of God in order to do that. Let's look at another scripture. Go over to Psalms 78. Psalms 78. When you get over to the book of Psalms 78, stop right around verse 4. And watch this. We will not hide them from their children. See, we will not hide the word of God from our children. Teaching the generation to come 
the praises of the Lord and the strength of his wonderful works that he has done. In other words, we're going to tell it to our children. We're going to talk about it when we lie down. We're going to begin to minister to them. They're going to see it activated in our lives. They're going to see us walk it out, praise God. That's influence, amen? amen. Since you're in Psalm, go to Psalm 145 and verse 4. Psalms 145 and verse 4. It's up on the screen as well, so you can read it with me. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. In other words, one generation should begin to speak to the other generation, and that's what I'm even doing today. Those that are younger than me, I'm speaking the word to them, and they're going to turn around and speak the word to their generation, and it's going to cause a, an anointed power and release a culture of change in the lives of people. Can I get an amen to that? Amen. That's what it's about, influencing the nation. It's God's plan. Now, 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 put number two up there. Number two is, is that the power of influence is not a demanding. It is subtle. The power of influence is not demanding. It's subtle. It, it, it doesn't demand you to do something. It, it is subtle. It does, not, it does not bogart its way in. Influence doesn't do that. Influence is subtle. Matter of fact, most of the time when we're being influenced, we don't even know that we're being influenced. It affects us even without knowledge. It happens to us that we're beginning to be influenced. I, I, I know when others are influenced, even in this church, that are influenced have, have taken place. Other than anointing, now I told you about the anointing power of God. It is released. But the anointing is given to us for our God-given assignment. And our God-given assignment to do that work. God empowers us with the anointing. But when we talk about influence, influence is a little different because influence brings change in the lives of others. Because when you can influence others by your commitment to Christ, it then... Well, once again, I hope you enjoyed the broadcast. You just don't know how much I enjoy bringing the broadcast to you. You know, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. The more you continually hear the Word of God, the more lives are changed in your heart and your life changes by the power of God. Now, what you need to do today is get the CD. It's available for you absolutely free. You got to call the number on the screen. Now, I already told you, you cannot get this CD uh, free on our website and neither get it free at our bookstore. You can only get it free by calling the number on the screen right now. Operators are waiting on your phone call. They'll send it out to you absolutely free. We're excited about what God's doing in your life. So today, be committed to that. I want to pray for you if you're not saved, if you're not born again, if Jesus Christ is not Lord of your life. Could you say this confession with me right now? Say, Heavenly Father, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins, known and unknown. I renounce them all. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you now as Lord and Savior of my life. Well, if you said that prayer, meant it with your whole heart. Call us here at New Life Christian Fellowship Church. We're waiting on your phone call today. We got people going to pray for you, going to believe God for great things to happen in your life. Also, too. I'm going to send you out a disciple manual. I'm going to send you out a CD that says living in your righteousness. And then I'm also going to send you out a daily devotion that can help you grow in the things of God. Now, you got to get in a Bible teaching church now. You got to get somewhere where you're going to be able to learn the word of God. That's if you're not in a church. You may be in a church right now and you don't need to change the church, but you need to make sure you're in a Bible teaching, believing church. So I want to help you out on that as well. All you have to do is go to our website. And in the comment section, say, looking for a church, and then put your area, and we can send you some great suggestions of churches in your area. Now, and then, but get into a church, learn and grow, and watch what God does in your life. Once again, this is Pastor Easley telling you to experience new life. God bless. You got to be willing to take the Lord's seat. Even though you may know the right way, sometimes, uh, Lady Lisa said this way, it's just best to be quiet. I said this way, best just shut up. The two same things, we're saying the same thing, but you know, just a little bit different. <laughs> Sometimes you just need to be quiet and allow yourself to hear the hurt, to hear the pain. Sometimes it's not time for ministry. It's just time to listen. The Bible says it's time to cry, it's time to laugh. Rejoice with those that rejoice. If we want to impact our family and influence our family, let's get out the salt shake. Let's start sharing. There is a better way. Call now for a free CD of today's broadcast. Dial 1-866-910-LIFE. 
That's 1-866-910-5433. Dr. Easley would like you to have this free CD. Call our phone representative at 866-910-5433 today to get this offer. We are waiting for your call. Visit our website at newlifegcsc.org where you'll find more series by Dr. Easley. To all of our covenant members, partners, family, and friends, if you have questions, we have answers at our Faith Talk Tuesday Bible Study with Dr. Dexter Easley. You have what you want, but I choose to speak what I desire. So when I speak it, so I declare in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I thank you for the automobile. I thank you, Lord God, that I'm able to receive it. And Father God, I'm speaking according to your word. That if I call those things, it's not as though I desire them to be. I must act like it's so. So Father, I'm going to get into this car that I have now. And I'm going to act like I already have what I want. I got pictures of what I want. I got things that I can see. So now my mind, my whole body is focused on what. Now, I don't care what nobody else says. They come in the house and say, why you got that thing sitting up there? That what you want? You can't afford that. Father, in the name of Jesus. Faith Talk worship services begin at 7 o'clock p.m. So come and have those questions answered at Faith Talk Tuesday evenings right here at New Life Christian Fellowship Church. And we look forward to seeing you here. We would like to invite you to connect with Dr. Easley on Twitter at Dr. Dexter Easley. On Facebook facebook.com nl cf gc sc on youtube dexter easley ministry and visit our website at newlifegcsc.org stay connected Life Television Network, Chickasaw Mobile Preacher. Your station for smooth hits from the 80s, 90s, and today. 104.1 WDLT. We would love to have you come fellowship with us at Word of Life Community Church located at 111 South Florida Street in East Brooklyn, Alabama. Our service times are Sundays at 10 o'clock a.m. for Sunday school, followed by an 11 o'clock worship service, and on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. for our Power Hour Bible Study. For more information, log on to our website or call 251-456-2652 or 251-809-2887. Visit KC Photography, serving the Gulf Coast for over 16 years, capturing memories that last a lifetime. Families, children, graduates, weddings, and more. This month's portrait special, 33 photos for only $24.99. Get your pictures back the same day. KC Photography, 235 South Wilson Avenue, downtown Pritchard. Open on Sundays. Call today, 251-452-5200 or book online at KC Photography. Well, praise the Lord, friends, and welcome to another exciting edition of our Study of the Word broadcast with Apostle David Kaiser, Jr. A Study of the Word is an evangelistic outreach of rightly dividing the word Church of God, located in Mobile, Alabama. Stay tuned for the next 30 minutes as we take you live into the sanctuary with Apostle David Kaiser, Jr. You be blessed. Amen. 1 Timothy 6 and 12. Are we there? Amen. All right, and the scripture reads uh, as follows. It says, fight the good fight of faith, right? Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto God also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. 
and we started off talking to you about uh, fighting the right fight on Sunday and uh, acknowledging the fact that the fight that we fight uh, is a fight of faith, right? Or a fight for and with our faith. Y'all got it? And, and the Holy Spirit said to us that it was not more of this physical confrontation that, that he's talking about when we talk about fight. Now, we, we define the word fight, you know, as basically moral combat or human combat from that perspective. But when you fight in a fight of faith, it's more of a, a, a mindset. It's more of a state of being, right? It's more of fighting for a spiritual state of being that, that should be dominated uh, uh, by peace. Y'all got it? And so uh, in, the, in the natural, stand up, Elba Rell. In the natural, if me and Elba Rell was fighting, see, it would be all this, right? I'd be flexing, he'd be flexing. We'd be trying to get an advantage and pulling and carrying on to see who the strongest, who can get a punch in and so forth and so on. And a lot of times when we talk about uh, uh, fighting, that's, that's where we go there and we use that analogy, right? But the fight of faith is this. God got him. Yeah, I ain't got to put my hands on him. Well, you told me, sit here. I got that. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> right, right? And so I had to, to, I had to fight a little bit to just say, okay. Right? Okay, I'm going to be at calm. I'm going to be at peace. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to smile, and I'm going to watch the Lord work this out. Right? And, and you know the things I heard, if you don't say nothing, if you don't, and brought you down here again. <laughs> no, 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 no. But she, but she did. But my point is, that was a struggle I had just a little bit. If I don't get involved, it ain't going to be done. Right? And the fight was just simply to believe and to trust that God was going to handle that. Without me getting all bent out of shape and fired all up and, you know, ready to. Thank you, Elbert. <laughs> Y'all getting the gist of what I'm saying? Amen. So it's more it's more of a it's more of a spiritual state of being that should be dominated uh, by the peace of God that's supposed to be ruling our hearts, Amen, and our minds. Right? Y'all got it? Amen. And so when we submit a thing to the Lord, uh, we believe in God going to take care of it. Right? And and now whatever part he tell you is your part to play you had to be willing to do that also right in, in other words our part was go down there right that, that's what our part was right get in the vehicle right and show up and so that's what we did right we got, we got in the vehicle and we, and we showed up after we prayed after y'all prayed right and we, and we trust God that, that whatever needed to be done was going to be done. And then we watched him do it. Man, it was, a, man, it was exciting. To, to, I love to see God do stuff like that. You know why? Because it sets me up for the next thing that I'm believing for. Y'all got, so if I didn't have to get all frustrated about this and, and get all into it physically and all that kind of thing, well, you know, it's the same way about everything else I'm believing God for. Right? You know, uh, and so the Bible makes statements like, like we're supposed to labor to, or fight to enter into his rest or to enter into his peace, right? About what? About everything that he's already said to us in his word or, or on a personal level, right? Isn't that really the fight, Amen. right? To enter into that rest, to be at peace about everything else God has already said. And watch him work it out. Y'all got it? And whatever your part is, he'll, he'll unction you to, all right, this is what I want you to do. You know, but don't cut nobody's head off. You know, just, just watch me move. Is that all right? And so uh, we, we told you that from time to time uh, uh, people have to reignite and reengage and, and uh, uh, plug back in uh, their faith about uh, the promises that God have made you on a personal level, the promise that he's made you prophetically 
and the promises that he, you found in the book that relates to you. Right? Yeah. And, and it should be no shame in your game about that. You know, that's, that's, that's all a part, of, that's a part of your development. You're growing, you know. The shame would be that if you, if you for some reason laid your faith to the side, you didn't get back up and plug back in. That would, that would be to, to your loss, to my, lo my loss, right? Righteous man falls seven times, but each time he do what? He, he dusts himself off, he get back up, and he does what? And he plugs back in, right? And when you plug back in, I started to say that's what God meets you, but the truth is he, he still was with you even though you failed. He was with you when you went down, Right? And, uh, and most of the time, uh, he, he has already told you to get back up before you get here, and I tell you to get back up. <laughs> Anybody ever been there other than Right? He's been already told you, get on up, shake that off. Y'all got it? We, we, we still moving forward. You know, uh, Bishop Philip got a sign uh, in words all the way across his pulpit. It says, failure is not an option in here. Failure is not an option in this place. And so uh, with God, failure is not an option. Amen. And so there are plenty of people in Scripture who had to get back up and who had to uh, plug back in and reignite uh, uh, their faith. Amen. Is that all right? Okay, go to Matthew 14, chapter verse 22. Matthew 14 and 22. We're going to see, can we go a little farther? When you get there, let me hear you say amen. amen. It says, in straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him uh, unto the other side, while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went uh, unto them, walking, amen, on the sea. Now, you know, a lot of times we read straight through that without digesting the awesomeness of what happened. You got it? Now, the Holy Ghost, if he wanted to, could have left that out of the Scripture. Y'all got it? But what, what he's saying to me right now is that he wanted us to know, though, what type of an awesome God that we serve. Think about that event now. He told the disciples, y'all get in a ship. Right? Follow this movie now. Y'all get in a ship. You see him getting in the ship? Y'all go to the other side. And I would imagine he said, I'm going to meet y'all over there. Right? He went to pray and to, and to turn the multitude away. Right? In the fourth watch of the night, they out there on, on the midst of the sea, right? Storm come up, right? They trying to get to the other side. Jesus ain't nowhere to be found yet. They think he's going to catch the next boat. Right? Probably saying somebody, we had a flare or something, a uh, cell phone or something. We need to call the Lord and say, that, don't come out here, man. There's a storm out here. <laughs> it's raining, it's raining, right? And so the fourth watch of the night, now think about this. Here comes Jesus walking on the water. Now he purposely done that so that we and them could know who they were serving. Man, now that's, that's, you that's, that's powerful. That's, man, he wants you to listen. This ain't no root of poop Jesus here. This ain't no, this ain't no Allah. Hallelujah. 
Uh, y all, y all, y all. This is the son of the living God, right? Amen. The God that created the heavens and the earth. And this is just a sample, glory to God, of what we are capable of. Can y'all see that? That's a sample. That's a, sample. That's a, that's a little taste of what, of what we, we can do here, you know, what, what, what's all possible. That's what he's saying was all possible, you know, uh, with him. And so we had to quit reading through that stuff, man, and, and really soak that up. Man, that's who we serve. Yeah. You know, and, and so, what verse we stopped at? 24. And so it says, but the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary, right? And in the fourth watch uh, of the night, uh, you know, of course, that tossed with wave, wind blowing, mess, it represents when, 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 when it appears to be times where you're in the midst of, of, of discomforting situations, you know, in the midst of times when it does not appear as if you're going to see what he said manifest, and that was what? Go to the other side. Y'all got, I done told you I was going to bless you. I'm going to take care of all that. I got that all under control, right? And now the wind blowing and the waves. Yep. Right? A few folks said no. <laughs> you can't have it. Hallelujah. Right, right. And, and, and you thought that he didn't, Jesus never said that. Right, right. They go on to the other side and the devil talking about you can't go. Are y'all y'all all right? She said in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. Golly. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, <laughs> saying, it is a spirit. Yeah. I think one translation say a ghost. Yeah. Something demonic. Yeah. Right? And they cried out for fear, but straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. Glory to God. God about to do some stuff for some of us. Hallelujah. Are, are, are y'all right? It, it's going to be so in the natural, unbelievable. Uh, y'all hear me? It might even shake you a little bit. Uh, it shook. The, see, the magnitude of the power that was manifested upset them. Glory to God. Uh, y'all, somebody said, Holy Ghost, help me to receive. The magnitude of what you're about to manifest on my behalf. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise right there. Glory to God. Man, hey, 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 man. And, and I think that's, that's part of what he, he's trying to say to us, man. I'm about to do some things that's so out of the norm. Glory to God. And we got to, listen, that's where we got to be. All the time with our faith, you know, uh, not just expecting the norm, the average, what everybody else get. Man, but, but, but we want God to manifest himself to the point of it just like, what in the world? What in the world? So when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake uh, unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I, be not afraid. In other words, you know, you be at peace. He was really saying, I'm doing this for your benefit. I came to save you. I came to deliver you. I came to make sure... That what I told you come to pass. Y'all, y'all, I came to make sure. I told you to go to the other side. Right. Not only did I tell you, but I'm going to make sure you get there. Glory to God. And he was saying this too. In your getting there, you're going to understand. And you, you can just receive this. It ain't going to be by your power or by your might. Glory to God. This ain't going to be by your power or your might. And I think he's telling us, don't.
Don't, don't even try it. You understand? Just let me handle it. Just let me handle it. He said, I got this. And you don't have to worry about whether or not he got enough for everybody. He is. You're more than one person on the boat, you understand? You don't have to worry about Elder getting his lunch. If Elder get his lunch, I'm getting lunch too, you understand? Right, right, right. He got, he got enough power for, for everybody in the ship. Man, I, I just love it. Y'all got it? But straightway Jesus spoke unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, I be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, Bid me come unto thee, amen, on the water. Amen. And we all can learn something, amen, uh, about Peter, amen. I believe, you know, Peter had a revelation some kind of way from the Holy Ghost. Now, he bold, bad boy, but I don't think he was just that bad. You understand, God had a, had a, had a way of speaking to Peter privately. You know, Jesus asked them boys one day, you know, who do men say that I am? Yeah. Right? And some say he's Elijah, some say he's a prophet, and some say you're Jeremiah. But he said, but who do you say that I am? And out of the whole group, God spoke to Peter. <laughs> and gave Peter a, a revelation. He said, thou art the Christ. And so what that tells me is that Peter had a certain type of sensitivity that, that the rest of them didn't have. Can y'all, can y'all, because ain't nobody else say thou art the Christ, the son of, in fact, they were scared to say something. They thought Jesus was trying to set them up. But Peter had a certain type of sensitivity that God could speak to him. And I believe right there in that boat, are y'all all right? Peter got a re another revelation from the Father. And in Peter's heart, he understood some kind of way that where he is, that's where I'm supposed to be Glory also. Glory, Glory to God. That he wants that same type of power manifested on my... He wants the, 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 the impossible to become possible for me. Amen. And it made Peter ask the question. He said, Lord, if, if that's you, <laughs> bid me to come. You know, it's a script over, over in 1 John. It says, as he is. So are we in this, in, in this world, right? right? And so Peter said, said, bid me to come unto thee, right, on the water. In verse 29 it says, and he said, come, my goodness. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, man, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Man, he believed what Jesus said. And that boy climbed down out of that ship, and he walked on the water to go to Jesus. The Bible said he walked. But when he saw the wind bolstering, he was afraid, right? And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me, right? And so what he did, he lost his calm. He lost his peace. He forgot about the fact that Jesus loved at him. Right? And, and, and if you believe God loved you, you believe he got you. Amen. We don't fear until we start thinking God ain't got us. That's, that's, that's really the only time. And, and I'm saying it's a, it's a, it's a developmental thing that, that we have to practice all the time. Uh, the love of God, you know, uh, the unconditional love that God has for us, right? Amen. Why would Jesus tell him to get out of the boat and he would already made up his mind he's going to let him sink? You got it. And so what the enemy tries to get us to do, he tries to get us to look away from Jesus, look away from his love for us, look away from his word, what he said, right, and put us in fear. And your faith needs peace for you to work, for it to work. Bible saying, let the peace of God rule your heart. Y'all got it. Jesus said, my peace I leave with you. Not as I give unto you. Not as the word give out unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Right? 
Isaiah 26 and 3 said, He'll keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind is stay? Why do we have to stay in peace so our faith will work? God showed me if we get to it tonight, he said the Holy Ghost will work more effectively when you are in peace on your behalf. Because when you're in peace, you're in faith. Can y'all see that? What verse? I just finished 30, right? But when he saw the wind boasting, he, he was afraid and, and beginning to sink. He cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Right? Now, this is an amazing statement because Jesus saying walking on water was little faith. Did y'all did y'all hear? Walking on water. Now, don't get under no condemnation now, right? So if walking on water is little faith to Jesus, I wonder what kind of faith we operating in. Look over him. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Now, the way you receive that statement is not, not condemnation, but, but become more confident in what you're believing him for. That's how you receive that, right? If walking on water is little faith, right, and to us walking on water, <laughs> right, right. So surely, if that's little faith, what I'm talking about, a bill or some money or some, some church or some building a church or something, you know, that that can't you y'all y'all all right? That can't be no real big deal with him at all, right? So what I ought to do is calm my little happy self down and say, you know what, God got that. God got that, right? Because you know if we was out there in the bay, right, of the Holy Spirit, <laughs> and Jesus said. It ain't got to be storm. It could be calm. He tell me, get out. He tell me. <laughs> he tell me, get out this boat. Ooh. We want to sign a fleece. Let it lighten in three times in the east. And, and then... <laughs> <laughs> but 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 my point is, like I said, let that encourage you to trust God even but the more. Right? To trust God, amen, uh, even but the more. Amen? So, uh, but Jesus stretched forth his hand, right? And he, he saved him, right? Amen. He saved him. And so much that the multitude... I'm on the wrong chapter now. 14 and 31, right? And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Amen. And so even with little faith, Jesus won't let you go under. That's encouraging to me. Right, right, right. That he, he ain't looking down on you. Right. He, he told Peter where he was. Right. But, but, but with little faith, he's still a savior. He still is saved us. Amen. And I thank the Lord for that, right? And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth thou art the Son of God. Right? And when they were gone over, they came into the land of the Gadarene. Now one pastor scripture said, and they were immediately at the shore when Jesus came into, into the ship. Right? So his so his presence brings an acceleration of what he has promised. Y'all got it? And you get his presence through worship. Bible said when they got in this when he got in the ship, they immediately came to him, right? And they, they worshiped him. And the other passage said when he came in there, they were immediately at the other shore. Right? So when we worship, it creates an acceleration. 
when we worship him, it creates an acceleration of what he has promised us. Amen. You know what? That's a good place to worship right there, y'all. What y'all what y'all, what y'all thinking? That's a good place to praise God right there, right? And, and, and you need to embrace that because sometimes people think worship is of no, no value or they don't recognize the value of worship, especially if they're tired or something of that nature, right? Or they've been out there in the wind and the waves, right? And then you, you, you come in the house of God and worship is required of you, amen? And God is saying, if you worship me, I, it'll help me accelerate what I promised you. It's not that it's, it's something that, that God only benefits from. Y- y'all got it. But it, it causes an acceleration uh, to take place about what he has. I mean, that's how I, right? When I'm worshiping, I feel like God is doing something on my behalf. I'm getting a, a kickback from that, that God is moving. Because when I'm worshiping and telling God, you know, thank you, I praise you, I give you glory, right? Doesn't this happen to you? Doesn't the things that you believe in God for kind of float across your spirit? Float across your, your, you don't see a little glimpse of the car, the home, the, the, the whatever it is you believe in God for. Doesn't that happen to, to y'all? I mean, and you don't start out worshiping for that. It's, it's just a byproduct of your, yeah, what you're believing for. And your what, it just, it comes up in your spirit. And I believe what the Holy Ghost is trying to tell you while you're in that, in that, in that place, amen, is that God is moving those things. Right? Closer and closer to manifestation. Can you, that's, a, that's a good reason to worship right there. Amen. You don't be trying to act like, well, I don't, want, I don't want that to interfere with, well, you know, I understand all of that, yeah. But when you, when you get through with that and I want it to interfere, the next thing on your list, well, God, what you going to do about this right here and that right there? <laughs> And all that kind of stuff. And he might be saying to you, I was doing something with it while you were worshiping. Right? It's a scripture that says, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. So when we worship, and, and it brings forth the manifestation of the presence of God, so we know the enemy being affected by our worship. Right? Not by us, but by our worship unto God. Because when God arrives, enemies be scattered. Y'all got it? When God arrives, the Bible said. You have just been blessed by studying the word broadcast with Apostle David Kaiser Jr. If you would like an audio or video copy of today's message, please email us at rdtwtvpros at gmail.com. Connect with us daily on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or Ustream to catch past shows, words of encouragement, special events, or join us live in the sanctuary. We're located at 760 Ermira Street in Mobile, Alabama. Our service times are Sunday school at 9.30 a.m., Sunday morning worship at 11 o'clock, and Tuesday night Bible study at 7 p.m. Join us at this same time next week for a study in the word broadcast with Apostle David Kaiser, Jr., you be blessed. You're tuned in to Life Television Network, your number one Christian station. Hi, I'm Felicia Albritton. Thank you for listening to WGOK. Waiting one month, two months, three months, that's not good. The other car insurance say, why do you wait? One month, two months, three months. Dr. Gordon D.C. will see you possibly today. I say, I'll see you right away. Don't wait. One month, two months, three months. One call, that's all, at 476-PAIN. The choice is yours. Hello folks, Tupelo Ron here, 7150 Airport Boulevard, Tupelo Furniture, Best Mattress and More, where we're having our year-end clearance sale. Right now we're having 60% off of our Sealy Postropedic bedding, 50% off of all sofa loves, 60% off of bedroom suits, and our southern motion sectionals as much as $2,000 off on the floor samples. That's at Tupelo Ron's Best Mattress and More, 7150. 
Airport Boulevard. Tell them Tupelo Ron sent you. Hello, folks. Tupelo Ron here at Tupelo Furniture, Best Mattress, and more. We're going to do something a little different here today. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the word out on the deals that we have, the different products that we handle, the great prices. We do a lot of closeouts here. We have one of a kind, and some of them we'll have them three or four deep. But we carry mattresses now that we are partnered up with a company out of Nashville called Best Mattress and More. And we've got like 50 mattresses on the floor. We have great prices. I, I'm going to think that we probably got one of the largest display of mattresses in the state of Alabama. And in addition to that, one of the things we have, if you buy before 2 o'clock, you can get same-day delivery. If it's after that, you can get next-day delivery. And some more of the features that we have that in 30-second spots, we never have the time to tell you is that we have free delivery here in town and we consider town like 30 miles in each direction from the store here so what that means to you is you don't have to pay a hundred 125 or whatever it is for any kind of deliveries it ain't free to us but it's free to you but i want to show you some of the deals we got in here come on follow me over here start with we handle beauty rest we got three different lines in here, and we picked these three on purpose. We carry the beauty rest. We carry all of theirs. We will sell a beauty rest probably 30% cheaper than anybody else in town. Now, we have our specialty mattresses that's by Sealy. I'm going to get to that in a few minutes. But any of these things like the beauty rest, the uh, Englander Resort Collection, we're going to sell them cheaper than anybody else in town. We do it on purpose because we can do this. We're not just a mattress store, we're a furniture store also. Now, we used to be just furniture when it was Tupelo Furniture Outlet, but now we're Tupelo Furniture Best Mattress and more. We had to do that in order to get the dealership with Best Mattress. We had to give them half of our floor to display. As you can see, we've got, uh, I don't know, mattresses just displayed. So, but we also have furniture. Come on over and show you some of them. We have over here, I'm doing this for a price thing, because nowadays uh, a good night's sleep is important, but everybody's concerned about price, and they should be with the economy like it is and everything. This is the Optical by Sealy. This mattress here, these on the adjustable beds, these are the all foam, memory foam, cool gel, the works. This Optical will sell in our competitor stores, when it's, it's regular $15.99, this is a twin extra long, which is half of a king bed. It takes two of them to make a king like that. Twin extra long, okay. They're gonna sell for $14.99, but when they're on sale, and by the way, I've checked our competitors, they're on sale for $12.99. We sell this mattress for $5.99. Every day, every day, not a sale. We don't have no sales, it's just every day. That's the way we do it. Come on over here and show you. This is how we do it. Here's a queen, Stearns and Foster queen. We have, uh, hey Don, excuse me folks, can you give me those pictures? I want, I want y'all to get this because uh, we got plenty of time to do this. And I want you to understand how we can sell them so much cheaper. Do you have those Stearns and Foster pictures? I bet I got them on my desk. Well, what it is, we have stores in Nashville, Tennessee, and we take the floor samples. And our guys will take them off the floor, put them in the plastic, put them in the truck, bring them down here. We're talking $22, $3,200 mattresses that we sell for $7.99, fully warranted. Now, if you don't mind, sometimes they'll have a scuff on them, a mark or something like that. But if you don't mind a little scuff or a mark, and we can save you a couple thousand dollars, and I'm not kidding you, come in and prove me wrong. Come in here. Let me get my, I'm going to show you what we got here. Stay with me. Thank you, sir. Here's some of the prices. You know, twenty-one sixty-nine for Stearns and Foster. Right here, twenty-nine ninety-nine Stearns and Foster. All right, this is what they look like. Can you see that, John? This is like what they look like when we bring them in. They're in plastic like that. We've taken them off the floor out of Nashville, showroom floor. They change the models about every, I don't know, about every two months. Here's one of the stores that they come out of there. Beautiful store, upscale. I mean, it's not a, it's not a. Uh, trash place it's beautiful but they change the models and then we get them and we bring them in here like this this is a nice series mattress this mattress right here sells in the stores in Nashville for twenty two hundred dollars now we don't have a queen we have a king now tomorrow this could be a Stearns and Foster 
because this just happens to be one of them that came in. We sell it, $7.99, same as the queen, $7.99. Come right back over here. This mattress is a Stearns and Foster estate. Google that when you get a chance, guys. Google that and see what Stearns and Foster has, a state mattress. This mattress will sell for anywhere, depending on if it's in one of the Macy's department stores. Let me see. Here it is, $33.69. But it's a floor sample. May have a scuff. I couldn't find any scuffs, even though I was looking for some. I was hoping that it would have one, so I'd have an excuse. But nevertheless, it's $7.99 for that mattress every day, as long as we got it. Now, when we're out of this one, we'll put another one out here. Come on over. Check this out. Another state sold it today, Stearns and Foster, probably a $3,000 mattress. And all you have to do is Google it, see what Stearns, Stearns and Foster sell for. This is the estate. It's the Scarborough Ultra Firm, $7.99 every day. Now, we also have cheaper mattresses. Come on back. This is the Englander collection here. This is the resort collection. These are great mattresses. We have these on sale. Now, we don't, we don't have a sale, but if they're going to change out the mattresses and they change out the whole collection when they do, I don't, I don't know what the deal is. They change the colors on them here. I think sometimes what they're doing is they're trying to find a fabric that's cheaper than this fabric to run these. Because nowadays, you know, the trend is save money, save money, everything's cheaper, which is not a bad idea. But when they do that... They don't give these to us, but they discount them. So if you don't mind taking one off the floor, we can save you a fortune. We'll save you 50, 60 percent. Some of these mattresses sell for as high as $3,000, $4,000. You're going to get them for like $1,800. Still a lot of money, but it's a lot of mattress, you see. Also, if you're looking for just a cheap mattress, now we don't get any cheaper than this. This one in a queen. This is an all-foam mattress in a queen. $3.99. We don't even want to sell a cheaper mattress than that. Now, I know you can buy them out there. As a matter of fact, some of the big box stores right here in town in Mobile, Alabama, where they have, you have to become a member to buy, and you pay your little fee, and, and then you go in and you buy. I'll tell you one of them they have. They sell a Serta bed. Lady was in here just the other day said, I could buy a Queen Serta for $369. I said, yes, you can. But you can't, and I'm going to say this for all the bedding stores in town, it ain't nothing like the one the big box sells is nothing like the bedding stores sell. They sell Serta. We, we have some Sertas that are floor samples. They have real mattresses. The ones in the big box, they buy so many, they tell Serta how many coils to put in it to dummy it down, scale it down, so you won't have it, so they can sell cheaper than the rest of us. And I don't mind saying that because I'm sick of that big box mess where everything is cheap, 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 but it's not the same thing. It's kind of like buying online. You don't know what you're getting until it gets there. Come on over and I'll show you some of the more products that we sell. All right. Half of the store is bedding, as you can see. Give them a shot of that, John. We had to do this in order to get the deals on bedding. We never had them like we have now. We've got these Stearns and Fosters, as many as, some of them, as much as $2,000 off. Now, you don't have to believe that. Come in and check us out. You will see. Now, over here, we also carry furniture. One of, the, one of the lines that we carry, and what I've started doing is we buy everything by truckloads or either containers. So we don't have the capability to change the fabric on this sofa love right here, for instance. If you want it in a different color, we don't have it unless we just it came in on that truck. Otherwise... You're going to buy this one just like it is. It'll be on the floor. It comes off the floor, same-day delivery or the next-day delivery, depending on whether it's 2 o'clock. I'll give you an example. Here's a sofa lub, $15.49. Now it's $9.99. Sofa, I want to show you some features about this. Charles of London arm, T cushions, a little other detail here. Notice right here. Don't go, you don't have to close, but anyway. Under here, this cushion is reversible. Not cheap furniture, and it's not scaled down. Look at the size of it here. This is not a tiny, cheap, uh, whatever they call it, discount store furniture. This is the real deal. This is something, when you purchase it, $9.99, sofa and love. Hello's come with it. And when you purchase it, it you've you got something to be proud of. It will last. 
by the way, it's got a 2.0 density foam. What that means to you as a customer, the foam in there, it has a dichron wrap, two inches around it, but the foam is hard, two inches. What we do is that we take foam, like I said, it's like ice cream, it's full of air, but they take a 2.0 density foam and they make a cushion, they bake it. Well, they can do the same cushion with a 1.0, 1.5. The difference is six months later when you got it at home, everybody has got a deal on a sofa before and you get about six months down the road, cushion flat. And that's what happens when you buy cheap furniture. This is not cheap furniture, it's just price right. Come on up here and show you some things. Folks, let's talk about something that's dear to our heart. Sometimes when you don't have the cash on hand and you need those terms, extended terms, to get the product that you need or want at that time, that's okay. So if your credit is less than perfect, I mean like a lot less than perfect, we have a situation here where we don't need any credit. And it's not called a no credit check, it's a no credit needed program. And we can get you, we can get you financed with that with a small, the biggest down payment we've had to come up with uh, for the customers had to come up with is about $53 to get the product. And then they set you up on monthly payments. But now we also have 24 months same as cash. We do not have 17 years same as cash or whatever that is. I've heard some of these chain stores talking about. I, the other day I seen a commercial. Or I heard it. I didn't see it. It was on the radio and they said a three ninety nine dollars sofa. Take up to 2021 to pay for it. I'm thinking $400, five years, Maybe you shouldn't buy that sofa. You know, I mean, that's a long time. So anyway, getting back to our program here, we have the 24 months same as cash, and you don't have to have perfect credit. Look, today's market, a lot of people's had some problems. It doesn't make you a bad person. It just means that you got a little credit problem. You come in here, I promise you, we'll make it snow in July. I promise you on that credit deal. We are, we will get it done. We'll do our best. I promise you that. All you need is a checking account and an ID, and it's a done deal. You might need some income, but other than that, we can get you fixed up. All right, folks, back up here. Let's talk about sectionals. Sectionals now is a big part of our industry because people don't go as much. They're staying home. The economy's tougher. They're spending more time. They're ordering pizza in or watching TV. We have one of the largest selections of sectionals in town. Now, we don't just have sectionals. We have these and they're manufactured by Southern Motion. Southern Motion, one of the largest manufacturers in the U.S. Now, how we sell them cheaper than the big box, which ain't very many big boxes get the Southern Motion, but because they're uh, more expensive than junk. But nevertheless, what we take, we get all their closeouts. We use the closeout fabric, fully warranted. We use all their mechanisms, leg it and plat, and then we put these fabrics, we pick the ones we want, we save thousands of dollars. This sectional right here could very easily be $4,200. Look at it. Got a power. I'll show you right here. Reclining power. Here, here, two others over here. So you got four recliners. Console here. We sell it for $1,799, this sectional. Right, over here, all over leather sectional. And I'm not going to get any great detail about them because they won't be here but just a few days anyway, and then we'll have some more in just like it. But nevertheless, this is one that we got at the market. It was a closeout all over genuine leather. And we don't usually deal in leather. We deal in Duralux. I'll show you what Duralux is here. Duralux is a man-made fabric. It's a polyurethane. It feels like leather, but it is not leather match or anything like this. Over here, this is the real, the cow paid the price for this one. It's the real deal, genuine leather. We won't have many of them. This one was $6,000. We sell it for $2,900. That's if you just got to have the real deal. And I don't, you know, everyone likes that now and then. Come on over into this department. Those are the motion sectionals. These are stationary sectionals. If I'm not mistaken, we have 22 sectionals on this floor at any given time. So, sofa love, sectionals, dining room, Recliners, we got the works. And if you like something a little more flashy, turn around and look at this. Let me show you. Check that out. Red, green, blue, whatever color that is. Just a little trinket there to go along. But a lot of the youngsters seem to like that. Bedroom suits. 
Uh, we buy our bedroom suits from a company out of Dallas, Texas. It's called Elements. These bedrooms, we buy them by containers and truckloads and closeouts. Now, if it's not a container, if it's not a, we don't we don't order just one. We have to order a truck to get a real deal. But with everything as slow as it is these days in the industry and many other industries, when you buy that many at one time, you can get a deal on them. Trust me. We got this group, King Bed, Dresser Mirror, The Works, $13.99, $13.29, excuse me. This is real furniture. Notice the height of this furniture. We're not talking about kid furniture here. We're talking about the real deal here. Velvet lined drawers. Look here. You can open that drawer with one hand, put your furniture, your clothes in it with the other hand, and it not hang up on you. Come on around here. I want to show you something. Here's the bed here we bought. We got a, I see, I don't know, I think we got 14 of these. These are Pulaski beds. They sold for $3,600. It's what this bed sold for originally. There's a closeout. $978 is our price, as long as we got them. And come on back up through here. Now, real furniture. Check this. The height and the size. Antique height. Velvet line, English dovetail, steel ball bearing glides. What that means to you as a customer, watch this. You can open it with one hand and shut it with one hand. So, I mean, this is real stuff. It's not, I know you can buy bedroom suits cheaper than $12.79, but you can't buy these. You can't buy nothing like this. You can buy a press board, something to last you two years or something, but you won't get wood like we have. Come on back. We've got all different styles. I'll make sure that we have different for different age groups. If someone wants a different style, we got it. Contemporary. Again, take a look at the height of this chest. Hey, this is not children's furniture. Look at this thing. This chest must be five feet tall. See, it's a real deal. All right, let's see what the price on. Fourteen seventy-nine for the complete group. Hey, by the way, speaking of complete group, you ever heard of a five-piece group where it's a headboard? Footboard, rails, dresser and a mirror, a five-piece group to us is the bed, dresser, mirror, chest, and a nightstand. Actually, it's a four-piece group. I should come up with something else to make it five, but we don't need to because that's everything it takes. Now, here's a group like here, a little bit different, but look at the, see, even though, see how those drawers glide like that. See how easy they do? Hey, that's serious business. And, and nowadays, folks come in, they're so concerned about the price, they don't take a few moments to say, you know what? That's pretty good quality. But they'll wish they had in about six months. Look at this group here. For instance, this is a living room suit with nail heads. Now, these are individually, they have to hire somebody to put that nail in there, each one of them nail heads. That's not a strip of tin that you tack on here and tack on over there, and it falls off and rolls up six months later. Sofa and love seat on this one with the pillows, $9.99. It don't get any better than that. It's real furniture. Come on back here. We've got a recliner department right back here, but I want to show you something we got in the other day. These recliners, big man recliners. Look at this. Three position, chase recliner, and it's not a little recliner, fully warranted, 349. Now this thing will sell for $600 anywhere. 349 at Tupelo Ron's Best Mattress and More. Got it. Come on over here. We'll show you something. Our sofa sets are fully lined. See this, see this cushion? It's lined on both sides. Now, that may not mean much to you now, but it'll mean something to you in about a year or two when one side starts looking a little worn. You can just flip that cushion over and get more life out of them as opposed to a cheap product that half of the this side's covered and the other side's paper. You know what I'm talking about. Come on up. We use a company here called Fusion. They're part of the BFI, Broyhill Furniture Industries. 
Fusion is one of their sister companies. Broy Hill, I don't even think, is in business anymore. Now, they, they went out of business, but their name will still be around. I'm sure they'll pick it up in China or something and use it. But it won't be the Broy Hill that your mother and dad knew years ago. But this is Fusion. Pillows, fabric, these fabrics are $30 a yard on these pillows. This group right here, Sofa and Love, should be 16 something, 10.99 every day, every day. And if you're looking for something for maybe the first time out of the gate apartment or something, you're looking at 6.99 Sofa Love, Sofa and Love, 6.99. And don't worry about it if we have this one because we don't. We'll have another one like it, another one of the fusion groups here. 10.99. Look at this, real furniture, not scaled down, big furniture. See that with the pillows. Folks, I want to bring you back up here and bring your attention to the quality of these sectionals. Uh, there are some different things, too. We have next day delivery. I don't care what time of the day you get in here. You don't have to wait two weeks for the merchandise. If they special order it two months for the merchandise, we're going to bring it to you the next day. At, if you're 30 miles in any direction from here, we go to Hurley, Mississippi at no charge, however far that is. I think it's about 30 miles. Uh, we go out here to Tillman's Corner. We go to Sarah Land. We go all of these places, no charge. All right. And I want to tell you a little bit about this. Since they come out with the Duralux, I know a lot of folks have had some real problems, including us, with what they call bonded leather. Well, what happened on bonded leather is this. They tested it. They have what's called a 30,000 rub test. It's a machine. They take that leather and they do this. They say 30,000 times. I don't know if they do or not. They just do it 10,000, but still a lot of times. But <clears throat> what they didn't consider is that the chemicals on, in our body when we perspire, in our hair, the clones that we wear, it separated the leather from the cloth that was bonded. So now they've come out with a thing called, some people call it Duralux, Durapella. But anyway, what it really is, it's a man-made material, like a microfiber, and it's on, put on to top of a cloth. It actually breathes. That way it doesn't peel because that bonded leather was a nightmare. Believe me, can, I, I can imagine paying three or $4,000 for a product three years later, it's peeling off. I mean, that's terrible. It's a terrible thing for the industry to do to us, to do to you. But they've tried to correct it. So we're past all of that. But one of the things I wanted to bring to your attention is the quick delivery, the no charge. And when you come in, uh, the and you have a problem, if you do have a problem, and you're in one of these big chain stores, you come back in, you find your salesperson, say, look, I got a problem. This arm come loose or whatever. Well, I, I can't help you. I'm a salesman. That's all I do. Well, who, who do I, I need to speak to your manager. Well, okay, yeah, we can take care of that. I'll turn that over to customer service over in Atlanta, Georgia somewhere, and they'll get back with you. But when you come in here, the salesperson will pick up the phone. They're going to call the manufacturer and say, look, we got a problem. Right arm facing is stitches come loose. I need to order that. I need to get it on order. Okay, and then as soon as it comes in, it usually takes about a week for, for the cuts to come in like that. Then we take it. We've got a guy here locally that not only works for us, works for other furniture stores. He'll come out and replace it. So you're talking to somebody that can get the job done. The only thing problem we've had is to get the message out. That's why we're going to start doing these 30-minute commercials like this, info commercials. That's at Tupelo Ron's Best Mattress and More at 7150 Airport Boulevard. It used to be Tupelo Furniture Outlet, Tupelo Furniture Outlet. So it's Tupelo Ron's, Tupelo Furniture, however you want to say it, 7150 Airport Boulevard. We're handling the bedding. We're handling the furniture. And we are in a position now to make the prices better than ever. Had a lady in here today, in here today, that had been in some of the big chain stores. She said, your prices are great. She bought a bedroom suit. Said, I can't believe it. I said, you can believe it. There is one catch. You got to buy the one you see, because I may not have another one like it. But we get them in all the time, because we're always doing these closeout things. Folks, let's talk about something that's dear to our heart. 
Sometimes when you don't have the cash on hand and you need those terms, extended terms, to get the product that you need or want at that time, that's okay. So if your credit is less than perfect, I mean like a lot less than perfect, we have a situation here where we don't need any credit. And it's not called a no credit check. It's a no credit needed program. And we can get you we can get you financed with that with a small the biggest down payment we've had to come up with uh, for the uh, customers had to come up with is about fifty three dollars to get the product. And then they set you up on monthly payments. But now we also have twenty four months same as cash. We do not have seventeen years same as cash or whatever that is. I've heard some of these chain stores talking about. I, the other day I seen a commercial. Well, I heard it, I didn't see it. It was on the radio and they said a three ninety nine sofa take up to 2021 to pay for it. I'm thinking, $400, five years, maybe you shouldn't buy that sofa. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's a long time. So anyway, getting back to our program here, we have the 24 months, same as cash, and you don't have to have perfect credit. Look, today's market, a lot of people's had some problems. It doesn't make you a bad person. It just means that you got a little credit problem. You come in here, I promise you, we'll make it snow in July. I promise you, on that credit deal, we are, we will get it done. We'll do our best. I promise you that. All you need is a checking account and an ID, and it's a done deal. You might need some income, but other than that, we can get you fixed up. Folks, I just thought of something. Let's talk about how to get you here. We're just, what, one mile east of Schillinger, about two blocks west of Cody on the right-hand side. You can't miss us. UJ Chevrolet. Right up here on the left, Ford Place, right up here on the left. We're in the heart of Dixie here, Mobile, Alabama. So 7150 Airport Boulevard. We are open from 9 in the morning till 7 at night every day except Sunday. We're closed on Sunday right now. We're trying to have a little more family life. We used to be open Sunday too, but that's, that's too much for us. There's not that many of us here. We're keeping our overhead down. That's another thing too, one of the reasons why we can sell cheap. There's not but five of us here. Me and two others in sales, and I work every day here, and then we got two delivery guys. And we do work, and we don't mind. We, it's a privilege to get to work. Or I feel like it. I don't know how they feel. <laughs> I think they do. But nevertheless, we're here at 7150 Airport Boulevard. Come on in and see us. I guarantee you we will do our best to earn your business. I am not kidding you. We're going to get you the deal. We're going to get it delivered fast. And if you do have a problem, we're going to take it personal, and we're going to fix it for you at Tupelo Furniture. Best mattress and more. Got to add that in there. I forget about these mattress people. You know, they want their little click. <laughs> we need them, though. Tupelo Furniture's best mattress and more, 7150 Airport Boulevard. Tell them. Tupelo Ron sent you. Hello, folks. Tupelo Ron here at 7150 Airport Boulevard. Tupelo Furniture, best mattress and more, where we're having our year-end clearance sale. Right now, we're having 60% off of our Sealy Postropedic bedding, 50% off of all sofa loves, 60% off of bedroom suits, and our Southern Motion sectionals as much as $2,000 off on the floor samples. That's it. Tupelo Ron's best mattress and more, 7150 Airport Boulevard. Tell them Tupelo Ron sent you. Life Television Network, Chickasaw, Mobile, Preacher. Attention type 2 diabetics. If you or someone you love has taken Invokana or other type 2 diabetes medications and suffered amputation of your toes, feet, or legs, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Based on data from two clinical trials, the FDA has determined an increased risk of foot and leg amputation. If you've suffered an amputation while taking Invokana, call Guardian Legal Network now. If you don't win, you pay nothing. Call 800-750-2713. Prepare your hearts to experience a life-changing anointing. Prophet Robert C. Blake Sr. pastors a ministry that reaches out to those who are bound and ministers healing and deliverance. His dynamic ministry touches the lives of people throughout the nation and international continents. God has placed a sure word of prophecy in his mouth. 
Welcome to the Taking the Kingdom broadcast. Let's join the prophet. We're talking about mind, mind healing, stability of the mind, mind. You notice that everybody in here, there's not one single person in here without a head. If you see anybody in here without a head, let me know. Either they're going to get out of here or I'm going to get out of here. Yeah. Mine. Mine. We don't realize the awesomeness that's in the mind. God has given you something to develop. And that is your mind. Hallelujah. Mind has the capability of taking on, expanding, producing, and reproducing the mind. David prayed in the 51 Psalm, we noticed the other night, in that 10th verse, he asked God, create in me a clean heart. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Give me right thinking toward you. I want a clean mind. My mind is filthy. And I need a clean mind. Because I want to be able to enjoy you. You can't enjoy God when you can't think like him. And you've got to have him in you, in control, to be able to have his mind. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Creating me. Clean heart. Because I see where I have fallen. And when one falls away from God, he fails to think the things of God. And if he can't think the things of God, he can't do the things of God. I wish I had somebody here. Created me. Clean off. In the right spirit. You ever, you, ever, you ever saw somebody with the wrong spirit? So, you know, I don't mind dealing with you, but you, you got the wrong spirit. I don't like your spirit. I don't like the way that you receive things. I don't like the way that you talk. I don't like your attitude. Because mine has a lot to do with your attitude. one has an inferior mind he's fearful of everybody and he's so quick to believe that everybody's making little of him and he becomes defensive when it's not even necessary when it's not even necessary for you to defend yourself you, 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 you feel you have that inferior complex where that you feel that somebody else unconsciously to you that you think that they are better than you are and uh, you have to be on guard because you don't want them to make no food out of you somebody ought to shout hallelujah 
just spiritually belching this morning. You know, the mind creating me. I want the right. Why do I want you to create in me? Why do I want your mind? Why I want this is because God, I want to live in your world. And I can't live in your world with a mind apart from you. I've got to have your mind. I've got to have your thinking. Good God of mine. Hmm? I want to read why you're not in the ghetto this morning. The only why you're not lying in the gutter. It's because your mind won't let you go there. I want to why you're not living, sleeping in Skid Row. It's because your mind won't let you go there. You let your mind fall down to Skid Row. You're going to find out where you're going at. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. This is why I tell you people who have sick folks, who have sick folks, who have sick folks, take care of them the best you can, but don't let them kill you. Because you the time sick folk bury you. <laughs> you better have some sense. Do what you can. Because you're not God Almighty. <laughs> and you have limitation. And you got to know when to back up. For your sake. You better know when to back up. Instead of looking all crazy if you want. You better know when you have gone as far as you can go. You better know. I don't care who it is. You better know when to back up. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Man, man, out of mind. Man, there are worlds in your mind. See, the only reason why you where you are is because you got a sleeping mind. See, your mind has not been awakened. And a lazy mind settled for less than the bed. Lazy mind. I had a professor in school one day say, you know, y'all could pronounce words much, much better than you do, but you got lazy tongue. Lazy man. Settle for less. And because of that, you and I are being deprived. Because there are some capabilities in people that has never come forth. And because they haven't, we lack what is really there for us. Man. This is why you can't lock up with anybody. You come in contact, I don't care what kind of relationship it is, you ought to have somebody that can feed your mind. Am I talking here this morning? Talking? Your mind needs food. Mind need what food? What we call soul food, really not soul food. It's graveyard food. It's an early grave food. Soul food is this word of God. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I wish I had somebody here shouting hallelujah here with me. Man. 
tell you what. I have repented. I am repenting for laziness. Because I know, as quiet as it's as it seems, I know within me God has placed the answer to the world's problem. I didn't say community. I didn't say city. I said the world. But in order for it to burst out of me, there gonna have to be some commitment. And I've got to be willing to make those commitments. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Good God Almighty, praise God for Jesus Christ. Every person that has a degree in yet this morning had to make a commitment. Everybody who has ascertained a certain degree of knowledge had to make a commitment. They'll tell you that they had to get up when they didn't feel like getting up. They had to open the book when they didn't feel like reading. They had to discipline themselves. They had to make themselves. They had to push themselves. They had to command themselves. They, de they, they demanded themselves to certain subject matters. Now am I away from you, away from you all? Are y'all walking with me?